Okay, guys, I started this week's title Tuesday trying to make it to 2500. And of course, on the very first round, I had to play Super GM Ariane Tari. And I wanted to show you the game. I already posted a few things about it. I wanted to show you the game, guys, for you to see what I always tell my students. Whenever one of these, and there you can see it, I recognize the name and I had to look it up, right? So I confirmed this is my opponent, 2900. And I told myself, you know what? Even if I make it a draw, like some of you guys said, uh, I should be fine. So here's the game. Um, I wanted to show it to you for you to realize the same thing that I always tell my students. Whenever I play a super uh, a super strong player like this one, guys, they do not go like crazy to attack me and to calculate more than I do. They just keep it simple. And for the most part, they put pressure, put pressure until I collapse. So that's something for you to keep in mind. So here I'm just playing a very standard uh, setup that we know very well. This is like a, like a King's Indian attack, King's Indian defense, uh, sort of position and all of these should be familiar to you guys unless you're new to the channel feel free to, re to review the playlist that we have on the King's Indian defense, King's Indian attack and so on. So here so far uh, the only move that should be a little bit out of the ordinary and not so much but uh, it's going to be a4 and I did it mainly to try to make contact on a5 but of course my opponent got ready and if I did ever a5 they could do b5, they're going to be just fine. Not to mention that right now it is not safe. Now, at this point, this is a critical moment. I sort of didn't know what to do, and I said, you know what, let me do not h4 with the idea of doing f4 and f5, which happens to be wrong because notice that my rook is not on f1. And we've talked about this before, but honestly, I just wanted to keep it cool. I didn't want to take too much risks, and I wanted to stay in my elements. Now, right off the bat, here, I didn't feel comfortable capturing with the pawn. I didn't want to leave my knight hanging on h4. So I took with the bishop, and now I had to give him my pair of bishops, guys. And it's fine. It's fine. I, I felt like I could continue to, to hold the game and be okay. But in reality, this has to be way better for the black pieces. And this is what I was telling you before. Now, with the pair of bishops, my opponent is going to start putting pressure, trying to open up the game, so that his bishops actually outplay my minor pieces. So we got queen f6. I have to be careful and defend my pawn on f4. And that's exactly what I did. But notice that, again, my opponent is now the one dictating the game. So bishop a6 is always in the air. So I need to decide the best way to take care of that f4 pawn. So I took first. The queen took on d4 with a check. Fine. But now f4 is not a problem. Now here, the same thing, guys. I try to uh, improve my position little by little. I know that I have to connect the rooks, and that's, uh, and that's what I did. But still, I'm not comfortable. And you're going to see at some point, my opponent plays um, f5. And the idea is just to, again, open up lines for their bishops, their rooks. And, uh, and I, I can tell you, I, I did my best to defend. Now, bishop a6, we saw it. I'm not concerned about queen b2 now because I could do rook a to b1, skewer, I collect on b6, I get some counterplay. And that's the most important thing. I'm looking for a little bit of counterplay. My opponent is giving me nothing. So here I'm, I'm thinking the queen is away, but I, I, it's still too close. So let me do queen e1. Happy to trade queens and go to an endgame where it's going to be a little bit difficult for them to convert. So my opponent said, not today. I'm not going to take the queen and help you activate your other rook. So they moved back. And notice how that queen, guys, went all the way to d8. So there's no intention to go like crazy and, and put me in checkmate, right? So f5, uh, time for me to bring the knight to a better position. It served its purpose defending f4. I don't need it anymore. And the only piece that I need to improve before I feel better is that rook that is doing nothing on a1. So there you go, queen f6. Uh, and by the way, guys, queen f6 was marked as a blunder. And now all I want to do is rook a to e1. And notice that I'm trying. To, uh, I'm looking into knight d5, but I just didn't feel comfortable. I liked it a, li a little bit because if they took, then we're going to be left with opposite color bishops. 
but still uh, they're hitting B2 and, and it gets really uncomfortable. So I think I ended up playing Rook A2 E1, but notice that I took so much time and now I have 25 seconds. Last thing you want is to be low on time against a player like this. So I took with the bishop. This cannot be the best move. I should have probably kept that bishop on g2. So I dropped the pawn, but I'm okay. And guys, you're going, you're about to see a blunder that my opponent makes. 2,900 player, super GM, and they still make blunders. And to make things even worse, he has plenty of time. So queen f4, I mean queen h4, I cannot take on b7 because my rook would be hanging on e1. So I go rook e2, and look at this, rook e2. Now I can take on b7, and my opponent simply plays king g7. Horrible mistake. I could have gotten the bishop on b7 for free, but I didn't realize my rook was defended by the knight. So what I had calculated, let me actually show you here, guys. What I had calculated was if bishop b7, they could have done rook takes rook, and I thought I had to take the rook back with my queen, and then they could do queen h3, um, and eventually I was going to lose my rook from f1. So my opponent made a blunder. I didn't take advantage of it. In my defense, <laughs> in my defense, I was low on time. I had eight seconds, but I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have missed that guy. So anyhow, I did rook f4, uh, silly mistake. I missed the win. And then we get into this position. I have like two, three seconds. I'm playing with the increment. So this is what I calculated. It never crossed my mind to take with the knight. I don't know why. But anyhow, I get two minor pieces for the rook. But my opponent has two extra pawns, and on top of that, um, I'm really low on time. And you're going to see, guys, how he kept he keeps it cool, and he ends up winning the game. Look, just putting pressure little by little, making it, making it uncomfortable. That way, I have to think, I have to spend more time. There you go. Then h4 was played, and, and I'm just trying to survive here. But sooner or later, guys things just uh, collapse. So there you go, king h1. At this point, I'm just trying to not run out of time. And I think by now, he gets my two pieces, and that's the end of the game. This should be an end game that all of you should be able to, to win. True, I could create a pass pawn on the queen side, but my opponent has two connected pass pawns, which I cannot capture. And his king is just close enough to get my pass pawn. There you have it, guys. This game kept me from getting to 2,500, but I eventually got to it. And that's the game that I want to show you next. So next video that I upload is going to be me showing you how I got with the Pierce defense. I got to finally 2,500. So with that said, I hope that you found some value in this game. And I will see you guys on our next video.